welcome to this week's broadcast of Water, Wind, Wine Ministries. Today I would like to talk to you about a hundredfold return. Now I know what you're thinking, that would be great, because you think when I say a hundredfold return, it means if you tithe to God ten dollars, then you're going to get a hundred times that back. And it does mean that but it means so much more. What I'm actually speaking about is a parable that will change your life. As a matter of fact, Jesus said of this parable that's found in Matthew 13 and Mark 4, that if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all of the parables? So not only will this parable change how you understand the rest of the parables in the Bible, it'll also change your life. Let's take a look. Now I'm gonna read through Matthew 13, the first few verses where Jesus talks about the sower sowing the seed, and then I'm going to read through Mark 4 where he does the same thing. I'm going to point out a couple of differences in when I get to the explanation of the verses, because something happens between when Jesus speaks the parable and when he interprets it. So there are some very important but very small differences, and those differences make all of the difference. Okay, so follow me to Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 1. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and a great multitude were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, so we just read the actual parable as found in Matthew chapter 13. Now I'm going to read the one, it's the same parable but told by two different authors. I'm going to read the one in Mark 4, and then we're going to come back to the interpretation. So turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Mark 4, 3. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it didn't have much depth of earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. Let's get into the interpretation, and don't forget our subject today is a hundredfold return. Now, I hope you caught this. I hope you caught that in the Matthew 13 version, it said the return was 100 fold, 60, and then 30. But in the Mark 4 version, it said 30 fold return, 60 fold return, and then 100 fold return. So they're flip flop, they're backwards. We're going to get into why that is in just a second. But let's go back to Matthew and look at the interpretation that Jesus gave his disciples. Matthew chapter 13, verse 18. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received by the wayside. But he who receives seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Okay, so that was the interpretation given to Jesus to his disciples in Matthew 13. Now we're going to look at the same parable interpretation by Jesus, just written down by somebody different. That is Mark. Mark 4, verse 13. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away 
the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some. Okay, so I'm not going to go through this entire parable with you because it's so big and there's so much information in it. What I want to draw out is the hundredfold return. Now, let me preempt this by saying this only really works if you hear God. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. If you know, and don't don't worry about oh, I don't hear God, then I can't get a hundredfold return. That's not true. You can hear God. God said that His sheep know His voice. So you can hear God. So, But what you have to do is you have to walk in faith. You have to, when you pray, say, Lord, I know that I hear you, and I know that you hear me. And so I need to make sure that I'm walking in what you told me that I could walk in hearing you. That's, that's number one. Before you try out this method, before you meditate on this method, before you pray about or utilize this method or what God showed me in this revelation, you have got to be where you're in a place of humility, accepting the word of God and saying, okay, Lord, I know I can hear you. Now I'm expecting to hear you. And you have to walk out what you hear. Okay. That's, that's the most important thing in these verses. And it's not even in there, but it's really important. Now, as I said, in Matthew 13, the return for the seed sown is 100 fold, 60, then 30. And in Mark 4, it's 30, 60, 100. They flip-flop. Okay, so here's the big difference. Let's, let's take the interpretation that Jesus gave. The word is the seed that's sown, okay? So the seed is sown, and the types of ground are the hearts of the people. Okay, so we know that the first type of ground is stony, is, um, excuse me, so we know that the first type of ground is by the wayside, meaning that there's nothing for it to land on. It's like if seed was thrown on a sidewalk, but there was no dirt on the sidewalk, okay? Then there's nothing for it to land on. This is the word when it's given to people who do not understand it. This right here, this is worth the price of admission. This is why Jesus spoke in parables, because Everybody on the planet who was ever born after Jesus manifested and before there is Jesus in the Old Testament, the prophets spoke about him, but I'm talking about after the cross, after, excuse me, after Jesus was born, when he started his ministry, Jesus always spoke in terms of salvation. And to those people whose minds could not receive salvation, he spoke in parables because if he would have spoken in heavenly terms, they definitely wouldn't have understood it. But because he spoke in parables, they at least have the parables. In other words, they were like children who you can't really tell the real meaning of things. You just have to tell them kind of a story about things, how things are so that they kind of understand, okay? And it's the same way here. So those are the seeds that are sown on the wayside, like on a sidewalk with no dirt on it. The seeds that are sown in stony places, now this is different. Um, it's not really on a sidewalk. It's think of like um, a gravel driveway. So there, you know how when you have a gravel driveway, some weeds do come up because there is dirt in between all the pieces of gravel. So that's exactly what Jesus is talking about here. That's the type of part. So some of it is dirt and moldable and plantable, and some of it is rock and hard. So these are the stony places that Jesus spoke of. Immediately, if you know, if you've had a gravel driveway, if you if have a weed that comes up, you can just walk by it, pluck it up just with your two fingers, and it'll come right, right up because it has no root in itself. It can't really go anywhere because the stones go so deep. Well, what Jesus was saying is immediately, when the word is sown on a heart like that, immediately it springs up because it has no root, and we are rooted and grounded in love, it has no root, then it dies away. In other words, these are the people who basically they hear the gospel and they're like, oh yay, Jesus can save my life, but they don't actually make a commitment. And when things get a little bit heated, maybe like the second month they've been saved, they walk away. And so they don't bring any fruit to pass, okay? 
those are the kind of people. This really isn't my discussion today. My discussion is actually a hundredfold return, but I'm gonna just finish this out. Now, the third type of heart is the heart that grows up and then the weeds grow up with it, okay? So this is on ground that's plantable, but the weeds grow up with it. And what those weeds are, in your mind, I want you to see your yard with grass and weeds. And if you go out there and you pull the weeds up, then you pull up the root of the grass too. So what you do is you just kind of cut down the weeds as well, or you take them very easily and you pull them out very easily. Otherwise, you'll kill the grass too. There's even been chemicals that you can spray on weeds that are said not to kill the grass. And that's the problem is because if you try to kill, you try to pull up the weeds, it brings up the grass with it. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He's saying, he's saying that this type of heart is where the word is sown and they're bringing little shoots of grass, little bitty fruit, little bitty seed, little bitty return, I mean, excuse me, little bitty return, and then weeds work with it. Well, the weeds will choke out the grass. So what Jesus is saying is if that, if a heart is like that, what happens is God gives you his word and then the distractions of life take it away from you so that you can't, you don't have time, you don't want to understand it, you don't really think it applies, this and that. Okay, so these are kind of what, what I would say is people go to church on Sunday or maybe they go to a Bible study a week, but that's the only time their Bible sees the light of day. That's the only time they spend time with the Lord. They don't meditate with the Lord. And if they do meditate with the Lord, the next time they're in a situation where what they've meditated on should be used, they can't bring it to mind and they can't use it. So that is the kind of ground that has been planted and it brings forth a little bit but not really because they don't really walk it out even though they have it and they are producing naturally a little bit. Okay, so those are the three first types of ground. The second, the, excuse me, those are the three first types of ground. The fourth type of ground is the good ground where the, there are no weeds, there are no rocks, and the seed goes right in. If it's such good ground, then why do we see that some get a 30, 60, and 100, and some get a 160 and 30 fold return? Remember when I opened this session, I told you that people think about money when they think about this? Well, let's think about this for one second. The reason that you think about money is because we think I'm gonna get $100 back if I invest this, or I'm gonna get $60 back if I invest this, or I'm gonna get $30 back if I invest this. Now, does this apply to money? It does. But this is not the sole use of these verses, of this parable. What this is, is goes beyond that. And you can see that if you look at the first three types of ground, you can see that these are life skills. These are life situations that come up beyond money. There's more to life than money. Uh, maybe you don't think so, but there is. So how do you get a hundred fold? Well, let's look at the answer to that. I'm going to turn to Mark 4 because that's 30, 60, 100, Mark 4, 20. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who A, hear the word, B, accept the word, and then they bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. Okay, now we're going to look at the passage in Matthew. Okay, turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13, verse 23. But he who received the seed on good ground is he who hears the word one and understands it two, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Okay, so there are two differences that I see. The first one is they hear the word, they receive the word, but they hear it, right? It says that they hear the word. And in Matthew 13, it says they understand it. In Mark 4, it says they accept it. Okay, all right. So here's here's an illustration for you, okay? Now, I have preached in the prisons several times. And because I've preached in the prisons, I have had the unique experience of speaking to several drug users. And I mean hardcore drug users. People who've just come into the prison off the street, people who've been there a long time and they're kind of in the prison rehab system. So I talked to both kinds. Now, the people who are coming off the street, who've just been plucked and arrested and sent to prison, like people who've like violated probation and stuff and they immediately get sent to prison, so they've got less than 30 days without drugs. Those people, when I go in to preach to them and I talk to them, they accept what I'm saying. They're ready for a change. They're so happy to be able to find a change. They're like, okay, 
I know I need to get clean. I know I deserve this. I know this. I know that. I know I need Jesus. Okay. And so these are accepting. And so that's what accepting means. Okay. But then you take the prisoners who've been there for a while, who are going through the rehab system and they haven't been on drugs for quite some time and you minister to them and they, and you say, okay, this is what you need. And they accept what you're saying, but they understand it. They say, you know what? That's exactly what I need. They understand it. Okay, they understand what I'm preaching. When you understand what the word is preaching and not just accept it, you act on it. See, that's the difference. Did you also notice that in Mark 4, it just says that he bears fruit? Okay, 30, 60, 100. In Matthew 13, it says he bears fruit and produces. Okay, how many of you know that bearing fruit is a natural thing? Well, I am a woman. I've had two children and my body just made ovaries. I didn't tell it to make ovaries. I didn't take anything special to make ovaries. Our bodies are designed to reproduce. Our bodies are designed to bear fruit, okay? I accepted that. I accepted that I'm a female and that I had ovaries that were producing eggs. I think I said that backwards earlier. I think I just said I produced ovaries. No, I produced eggs from my ovaries. Let me just correct that. But I didn't produce any fruit from those eggs, okay? I just accepted that I had the ability to. And it's not something that I did. It's not something that I had any action that directly affected that. I didn't just say, okay, Lord, now I want to produce eggs or talk to my ovaries and say, now you produce eggs. I didn't do any of that stuff. Okay, they just, God just made them to produce eggs the same way that God made your heart to produce good fruit. He made your heart that way. So in Mark 4, when it says that he bears fruit 30, 60, 100, the reason it's 30, 60, 100 is because he has to go from bearing, which comes from acceptance, like you're receiving the seed, all the way to understanding, okay? Because it's understanding that produces. When I became a mother, I did something to become a mother, to join a sperm with my egg to become a mother. And so I did something. So in that way, I produced something with what God had given me, what I already bore. Do you understand? I hope I'm making sense to you, okay? So it's the same way. God created us to bear fruit. We're going to bear fruit. If we accept, hear the Word of God and accept the Word of God, we're going to bear fruit. Okay, but if we hear the word of God, first accept it, then understand it, we bear a hundredfold first. Now, why does it go down? Why does it diminish? We can understand certainly how it goes from 30, 60 to 100 because it's just something that happens after walking it out so long, then you start to understand it. So you understand why it increases in Mark 4, 30, 60, 100. But in Matthew 13, it goes down 160, 30. Here's why. When you hear the word and you understand the word, you move on the word, okay? And because you get so used to moving on the word, sometimes it just wanes off. In other words, you don't have the same opportunities as you do when you're starting out. In other words, when you first start using the word, you're just so hungry and you're just like, okay, okay, okay. As you grow, you can still use the word, but you don't all the time because you're so used to walking it out and now you're so used to getting the blessings of God. Here's what I want to talk to you about. How do you actually bear a hundredfold return? Now, I want you to look at 2 Peter chapter 1, okay? 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, that does not mean knowing who God is and knowing who Jesus is. Grace and peace will be multiplied to you in the knowledge that they have, in the knowledge of God, not knowing of God, in the same knowledge that God has. That's why God says that in Matthew 13, that he who hears it and understands it bears a hundredfold return. That's why I told you that you have to be able to hear from God. You have to start practicing hearing from God, listening to God, because what happens is, when you come into a situation, immediately you can pray about it and you can reap a hundredfold return. How do you do that? You accept that you're hearing from God, you understand what he's saying, and you reap the benefit immediately. 
Now, this works not just in finances, it works not just in the spiritual world, because a lot of people think, okay, well, I'm only gonna do this in the spiritual world, meaning I'm gonna start doing it with things in the Bible, and then I'm gonna start doing it with like emotional things, like patience or self-control. Now, do we have all those as fruit of the Spirit? We do. And can we produce them using these parables? We can. Let me show you how to do that. When you find yourself in a situation, say somebody makes you mad, and you're very tempted to lose your temper, what you have to do is say, okay, Lord, you said I could hear your voice. I've heard your voice many times before. So I'm asking you to show me exactly what to do in this situation that will make me successful and leave this situation resolved, peaceful, and so that neither one of us get harmed by this situation. Immediately, the word of God is quick. And I know that means alive, but I use it as quick and God honors me. So immediately, once you've prayed that, you're gonna hear something in your spirit, in, in your inner man, act on it immediately. Because see, God honors faith. And even if you didn't hear from God, even if you missed it, God's gonna honor your faith and he's gonna back you up, okay? Just like he backed his mama up when it wasn't time for him to start his miracles in Cana when he made the water into wine. Wasn't his time to start miracles, but he backed his mama up because she had faith in him, okay? And you have faith. God is giving you mustard seed size faith. It says so in Romans 12, one, and so, what you do is you say, okay, God, I need to learn how to fix whatever it is you're working on. Lord, I thank you that I can hear your voice. And you don't have to say it like I'm saying it, but you, but you from the heart speak to God and in faith believe him. I thank you for telling me how to fix this perfectly, no problem, in the name of Jesus. And your heart's gonna hear something, try it, boom. That's a hundredfold return, bam. Okay, so it's not just for patience or for self-control or for things that are that seem to take a long time emotionally to develop. It can be for things like finding your keys or showing you how to figure out a math problem or showing you how to stop arguing, whatever. I use it for riding horses all the time. I'll be riding a horse and I'm like, Lord, I don't know how to fix that. How do I fix it? And immediately God will tell me something, I do it and it works every time. I have this slogan, it's called every prayer every time. Well, all my prayers aren't kneeling on my knees. In fact, almost none of them are. With my eyes closed, praying like, you know, like a little girl like this. Almost none of my prayers are like that. Most of my prayers are on the fly. Lord, did you see that? Lord, can you help me with this? Lord, what do I do here? Lord, remind me of a verse. Lord, give me something to meditate on. Or, I love you, God. Or, I'm singing to God. That's how my prayers are. And so, I get a hundredfold return every prayer, every time. God manifests every prayer, every time. All right, guys, that's how you get a hundredfold return. If you have any questions, um, please just hit me up on the website, waterwindwine.org, and I will be happy to get back with you. But for now, remember that I love you and that Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm.